Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast, a global community of financial advisors sharing and learning with one another to drive the positive evolution of financial advice. To get involved, go to xyadvisor.com or simply download the XY Advisor app. Portfolio construction and risk management are tasks that take you away from where you need to be, building relationships with your clients. Aberdeen Standard Investments can support you by creating bespoke investment solutions. Outsourcing portfolio and risk management creates efficiencies, enabling you to focus on fulfilling the ambitions of both your clients and your business. This podcast is being prepared with care based on sources believed to be reliable and all opinions expressed are honestly held at the applicable date. However, it is general information only and we accept no liability for any errors or omissions. Just be prepared without taking into account the particular objectives, financial situation or needs of any investor. Investing involves risk, including the risk of losing capital. It's important that before acting, investors should consider their own circumstances, objectives, and financial situation. The information's appropriateness to them and consult financial and tax advisors. Investors should consider the PDS available at AberdeenStandard.com before making an investment decision. Products issued by Aberdeen Standard Investments Australia Limited, ABM 59002123364, AFSL number 204263. Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast. I'm your host, Fraser Jack, and today I am joined by the CEO of what is considered the fastest growing wealth tech company in Australia. Welcome, David. Hi, Fraser. Or, or should I say, Kia ora. Kia ora. It's a delight to be speaking with such podcasting royalty as yourself. Uh, stop. stop. Thanks for the opportunity. Now, a uh, quick introduction to you, David Pettit. You are both running a uh, an, an advice business, which has sort of morphed into a technology business over the years, and an AFSL. That's right, yep. So well, what we might do is we might start at the beginning, because uh, I sort of met you many, many years ago when you were running your private wealth practice, and you sort of spent 15 years as a financial planner in a fairly traditional uh, space looking after high net worth clients in, uh, in in Western Australia. Yeah, that's right. And uh, yes, we've, we've known each other for a while and along, along the journey. I know I always know that you've been party to a good dad joke or a good pun. <laughs> Uh, so ultimately today we're going to end up talking about technology and uh, I've got this friend over here in Perth he's the CEO of a large fisheries company I met him in Antarctica a few years ago Uh, he's done some phenomenal things um, most of it in uh, sustainable fishing uh, being a carbon neutral uh, fisheries company Um, and they introduced some tech they put their supply chain on the blockchain Um, ultimately their customers could could end up tracking the origin uh, of their fish Uh, so the Pretty progressive stuff and at the cutting edge. Anyway, uh, the local newspaper reported on it and said, FinTech company that was scaling up. (laughs) (laughs) So Fin like fish, tech like tech, and scales like fish scales. Oh, brilliant. I do love a great pun. Well done. Yeah, that was a double pun headline. But yeah, let's let's get to the, the FinTech part a bit later and maybe share a little bit of the backstory. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned that we were a financial planning company that morphed into to tech. Um, it, it was actually the reverse of that. I, I'd had a career in financial planning uh, and then we launched a tech company and then our financial planning sector changed dramatically. Uh, so we brought financial planning into that technology company, which you know ultimately ended up um, bringing in the licensing function as well. So uh, keen to dive into all of that with you today and, and again, appreciate that I get to speak to the pod god, hashtag pod god. Um, to the backstory, I've been a private wealth advisor for about 15 years. Um, I've got this fundamental belief uh, between, between the, the link in, in health and wealth, and that is if we can help people live a, a healthier life, uh, both in terms of physical health and mental health, uh, then they're going to be better humans, better family members, and you know, better contributors to the community. Uh, I did a, a couple of degrees at uni. I did a commerce degree and, and a physical education degree, uh, including exercise science. And my professional career largely followed the path of the commerce degree, uh, helping people with sophisticated financial models, thoughts, theories, strategies, blah, blah, blah. And I was about 10 years into my career where I kind of got this physical education part of my being back off the shelf and then and then really started to talk about health and how that sits inside the uh, the financial advisory work that we do. So health and wealth is a big thing for me. 
uh, within our business, we were working in some large corporates over here in WA, um, big uh, multinational resources companies, helping their senior execs and uh, leadership team across their personal finances. And then ultimately having a chat to the decision makers in those companies around uh, health and wealth and what that looked like in, in the employee sense. How, how can we empower you as a company to, to get all of your employees optimised, uh, less uh, financially stressed in terms of their own personal finances, so ultimately they could be more productive in the workplace. So at the absolute top of the org chart, they were clients of ours and they gave us the go-ahead and they they referred us down the org chart to kind of the HR and, and legal divisions to get the agreements in place so we could look after uh, leadership teams and execs, but that's kind of where it stopped. Uh, and the reason for that is was around risk. You know, we, we come from an industry that, that was largely focused on, on product uh, and there's still a fair bit of stigma associated with that. And, and the risk that they were trying to manage was us going into their organizations and selling a product, uh, which you know, ultimately might be the right or wrong product and they didn't have the depth of knowledge to know. So uh, it became a blanket no, as in no access. So we you know, really got thinking at that stage. I, I wanted to answer the question on how we could make uh, you know, that integrity of advice available for the masses and basically for free. Uh, and the only answer was technology. So the, the next discussion we had with those corporates was if we came in with some uh, technology that allowed people to basically diagnose their financial positions, uh, ascertain what their financial wellness was, and then you know, work on creating a positive change uh, effectively from bad or slightly good score uh, to better or good score, then would that be something that would be of, of interest? Um, so then we, yeah, we, we got a really positive response to that uh, and dove all the way into that rabbit hole and, and did some MVP, minimum viable product testing, some online surveys, et cetera, pushed those across those corporates and then ultimately uh, got all of the feedback that we needed to uh, to kick off Picture Wealth. To validate uh, well, well done. Hey, before we go too much into that, um, a couple of quick questions. The you, you were dealing with, obviously, without naming names or talking about personalities, large, you know, like corporate CEOs. You mentioned with their personal finance. I mean, obviously, um, we all know, uh, you know, having spoken to a lot of people, that just because somebody's earning a lot of money or they're a senior executive or they're running a company or they might be a CFO for a large company, that their personal stuff may still be in a mess. Is that is that sort of what you found? It was the plumber with a leaky tap? Exactly. So we had the CFO at our boardroom table. And part of that testing as well was also to push out a research paper around, uh, it was called The Consequences of Personal Financial Organization. Now, apparently for a book to become an Amazon bestseller, it needs to be how to get six pack abs or, you know, better, better sex or eat more, lose weight, something like that. And uh, the, the consequences of personal financial organization didn't fly, fly off the shelf. Maybe get rich quick's the other one. Uh, but anyway, the purpose of that research was to kind of let those CFO profiles know that it's okay uh, and that you're not alone. You are the plumber, you've got the leaky taps, but so do all of your, uh, your colleagues, your associates, and other people who hold uh, similar roles within organizations as you. You know, you're managing multi-billion dollar balance sheets, and at home, uh, things are an absolute mess. So having the, the backstory on um, the research and the data, and you could really you know, bring down those walls very, very quickly in the first five minutes of a meeting. And, and can you just run through the research that you did in, the, in that space and how you went about it? Yep. I think it was brilliant, by the way. Thank you. Uh, we partnered with the Australian Institute of Management, and we uh, went across execs and senior leaders in business uh, across WA and asked a whole heap of questions uh, in, in relation to, to wealth, uh, but not many of them uh, were related to dollars and cents. Uh, it was more related to feeling, emotion, wellness, use of time, uh, and, you know, on a, on a spectrum, where do you sit across all facets of wealth, super investment, debt, estate planning, yada, yada. And, um, yeah, we, we found out every everything that we, we probably innately knew. Uh, later on, I, I met a lovely 
young lady had uh, called it a networking event and uh, I told her that I'd done some research in the financial services sector and her eyebrows went up and then we, we had another meeting and she later became my wife. So <laughs> who could have imagined that running some financial wellness uh, research would later on uh, land me a beautiful bride, but it did. Um, but yeah, that, that research, uh, it, was, it was a fascinating process and um, the big number that came out of it was that only one in six uh, people feel totally organised in relation to their money. Uh, now, the interesting and scary thing about that is we did the same research inside one of the big four accounting firms and uh, only one in 33 of them felt totally organised in relation to their money. Uh, point being is they they knew what they didn't know. Uh, the one in six who thought that they were organised, you know, broadly they're blissfully unaware. Uh, and then those who were uh, more in the professional services space knew what they didn't know and, you know, were calling out, can you help me? So that that was the, the advent of my uh, career towards technology. Um, it was fundamentally driven by uh, improving financial wellness, which, you know, is kind of at my, my core as a human being. Um, and yeah, the research, then that engagement with those corporates, which ultimately became uh, Picture Wealth, which is our technology company, was um, a pretty uh, interesting and educational journey across across society and and humans as a whole. Yeah, so here you are running a successful business, looking after CEOs and executive teams, uh, and then you creating this thing, as you said, it was a bit of an MVP at the time, as to how do we help all the other employees within that business um, find their, you know, or feel organised around their finances. Um, yep. how, did you, how did you start that process? How did you go about it? How did you build something from scratch? So the driver of the tech was largely around education. You know, uh, the the financial information that was available uh, online and, and, you know, largely ubiquitous is, is quite blunt. Uh, I'm a big fan of ASIC's Money Smart website. Their uh, information and glossary in there is uh, a financial plan is heaven because it goes into such detail, but the, the information is not tailored or customized to the needs of uh, the end user or consumer. Um, and it, it doesn't provide any guided decision making on what people need to do next. It's just, it's just information. So the technology was uh, around creating customized content for people in relation to their personal wealth uh, to educate them on, on how to make better decisions and ultimately do that for free. Picture Wealth, what is it? It was a, a tool that we put online a few years ago. We launched the company in March 2017. Uh, and you know, it, it was in, embedded in the name of the company, a single picture of your wealth, aggregate all of your financial information together. Um, I don't mean to downplay it, but think of it as a glorified Excel spreadsheet. It's also tapping on your computer screen and computing some stuff behind the spreadsheet and saying, hey, do this or think about this or have you thought about this or why why on earth are you doing this? Um, so we pushed the technology live and got some really you know great traction. Um, that was at the advent of uh, bank account um, aggregation and, and transactional information, which, you know, largely had been invisible to them to the everyday financial planner in the past and ultimately it was very invisible to the the end consumer as you begin to see a picture of your wealth you um uh, believe it or not feel a sense of calm you know one of the the users on the platform provided me some feedback directly to my inbox and it said uh, now that i've got my very own wealthy which is the, the the dashboard the wealth selfie that we we run she said, now that I've got my very own wealthy, uh, my money is worse than I thought, uh, but I feel uh, more peaceful and calm that I can actually see it uh, and start to understand what to do next. So the, the problem that we sought to solve for was just visibility, connecting uh, disparate financial information into a single system, and then ultimately sitting behind that data and information to educate and empower people to to make better choices. It's a really interesting step, isn't it? Just that certainty, as you said, even, even if the certainty shows that you're in a negative position, it's still better than not knowing. Yep, absolutely. And I love the, uh, I love the selfie, well, the wealthy, by the way. That's, uh, well, selfie. People let's used let's to go, think. let's keep, the, let's keep the puns rolling. That's that. People used to think I have a lisp. <laughs> I kept saying wealthy. What's wrong with that man? <laughs> no, no, hashtag wealthy. Look out for it. It's going to be amazing. 
Um, so yeah, that that ran for a year or so, and then and then we were thinking like a technology company. We were thinking about custom, you know, customer acquisition costs. We were thinking about lifetime customer value. We were spending money on Facebook, LinkedIn ads, getting people clicking onto our platform um, to ultimately uh, take them through a process that that could lead to an advisory outcome. And you know, I think this is where a lot of the the fintech companies. Their, their models have been revised significantly uh, off the last 12 months, particularly off the back of the, the pandemic, which pushed the market down and and dried up funding as if, if you didn't have a, a model that uh, produced revenue or allowed you to be sustainable, but you were reliant on investor funding, then uh, you weren't going to stick around. And we saw a massive cleaning out of uh, fintechs across, across last year, or at least getting acquired by massive institutions so that they disappear into the background. Point being is that that really high cost of client acquisition uh, in the robo advisory space, as it was was known earlier, or uh, in the fintech arena, um, is is pushing people or ideally pulling people towards a product outcome, uh, and products have to move towards free. Uh, so therefore, the financial model of those businesses uh, becomes somewhat questionable. I'm paying a whole heap of money to attract you as a potential customer onto my platform to then sell you a thing which I have to make forever cheaper to keep up with my uh, competitors. And, um, you know, you get to a, a point where you've run out of money. So we were looking at that customer acquisition cost in the business, creating great outcomes for people on the platform. But then, you know, I kind of leveraged back off some of my financial planning knowledge and, and professional experience and, mergers and acquisitions and, and looked at what Phasia meant uh, to the future of our industry. And then instead of just pushing our technology out into, you know, the great unknown uh, through online marketing, uh, we uh, sent it completely the opposite direction. And that's into those financial planners who are uh, otherwise looking to have a massive change in their business, exit and or not knowing what to do uh, as their next step. Uh, was to give them a, a safe place to come to. Uh, and then now we use the technology to, to ultimately unlock the dormant potential of their, their client data uh, and provide better outcomes for their, for their clients. Uh, last year, 2020, was our second full year of trading. The business now uh, has over two and a quarter billion dollars uh, funds under advice. Uh, re- revenues trending uh, upwards of $20 million per year. Uh, and in last year, being the year of, of COVID, where it turns out it's this year as well. Yeah, we, we did 15 acquisitions. Uh, so we, we pushed the technology out into the great unknown. And then uh, we want to sit here and help advisors who are a bit uncertain about their future, be they the ones that are leaving or the ones that are starting or the ones that just want to be optimized and have the best of breed technology backing them. Uh, and that's kind of where we sit today. Yeah. One of those was the the licensee, and we can we can talk about that when you're ready. Yeah, yeah, we we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so, so I just wanted to, you know, obviously, you, as a, as I mentioned sort of earlier, you know, one of the fastest growing wealth tech um, slash advice businesses in Australia, um, some through acquisition, obviously, but some through, um, like you mentioned, unlocking the potential or the dormant potential in uh, the existing clients. Um, yeah. So do you want to just run through how that works, like? Um, like how do you then just work out what that is and then how do you grow that client? I'll, I'll give you the extreme example. Uh, so advisor who's been in the industry for 30 odd years and his client files are still paper and they're in a filing cabinet in the corner corner of the office. Yep. Uh, probably a lifey. Uh, so he's only ever sold insurance. But in order to sell insurance, he's had to have you know the full depth of financial information across the whole client's profile in order to get to an end outcome to advise on the insurance product. Um, so yeah, let, let's grab that filing cabinet and we'll shake it. We'll shake the data and information out of it, and we'll put that into a, a pretty sophisticated database, and then then look across that database and start to do some some pretty interesting things. Uh, first and foremost. Um, you know, let's stay on the insurance topic and we can run a needs analysis across thousands or tens of thousands of profiles at once. Uh, and provided the data that's in the system is current and or accurate and up to date, you can, you know, link, sorry, list the uh, sums insured from largest to smallest and, and choose which end of the list you start at. Uh, but ultimately for the, the client, they potentially didn't have all of their financial matters addressed. 
Uh, so the dormant potential that resides in that data is, you know, why do they have two super funds? Why are they paying their life insurance premium out of their own name? That seems like a high interest rate on their debt. Um, what do you mean you don't have emergency savings? How come you've got money in the offset of 15 grand in your credit card? And that, that stuff is, it's tiny in terms of the, the quality of advice that professional financial planners give because they're more on the headline topics. Uh, but if you can kind of shake that data and information and bring that stuff out to create some really, really quick wins for people, uh, then that's that's the process of education, you know, and it could be the case that they just didn't understand why they would have money in their offset versus holding their credit card balance at zero or the fact that they could have perhaps paid for that life insurance premium and another, another method through superannuation and the likes. So dormant potential for us is working across uh, large pools of information and using our technology uh, in terms of, you know, uh, all of the uh, stuff that we're running on the back end of the system uh, to figure out how we can get someone further ahead. I, I presented to a group of advisors in Perth recently and, you know, just uh, said to the room, put your hand up if you've, if your clients have got insurance. Yep. Uh, everyone in the room puts their hand up and I said, all right, put your ha- keep your hand up if you know exactly how many of your clients have got kind of any occupation or own occupation definition. Uh, so then, you know, a good chunk of the, the hands go down. Uh, keep your hands up if you uh, can give me the exact amount of premium uh, that those clients are paying. You know, I probably had about 10 more questions up my sleeve, but by that stage, bang, everyone's hands have gone down. So when I talked earlier about empowering uh, the end client or consumer with their own financial data and information, uh, it's the exact same philosophy that we hold across the advisory businesses that we work with under our license uh, and ultimately for our license, you know, uh, what's our funds under advice across the business today versus yesterday, whose premium renewals are coming up, um, you know, what definitions reside inside insurance policies that are now out of date and uh, could be better. And um, for me, the fundamental driver is creating visibility across uh, financial data and information to, to improve people's lives. Yeah, so really being able to structure that data in a way where it's easily visible uh, yep. and can be pulled up and, and can create a learning and create some, well, opportunity, but also um, not just for the for the client, but for the advisor who was just opening files one at a time. Yep. Now, tell me about um, the technology because, I mean, I know there's people sitting here, uh, a lot of advisors um, have put the idea that they might just design their own, go and build their own technology um, obviously, uh, you and I both know that that technology is a, a bucket that you have to throw a lot of money into, um, and then continually fill that that bucket of money up again all the time. What sort of uh, if somebody you know starting out thinking about building their own, what sort of tips and maybe if we can talk about you know costs and fundraising and raising money, all those sorts of things along the way. If somebody's thinking about building their own, is this is this a three hour podcast? Uh, no, so let's go, let's do the short okay. version. Not the masterclass. Um, first part of your question, you know, the tech. Talk about it. Um, I really look at the disparate systems that run financial planning companies at the moment. You're probably running a Microsoft suite, maybe Dropbox. You've got uh, a CRM of some description. You've got a, a revenue tracking tool, which may or may not be accurate. Uh, you've got some quoting software. You've got probably some level of business intelligence, maybe Microsoft BI running across the business. You've got some stuff uh, running through through MailChimp and, uh, you know, fundamentally all of those things are what running a financial planning looks, uh, business looks and feels like. The stack. Um, the, the stack, right? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we. I just wanted to make that all our own. Uh, so we, the easiest way to think about it is we built all of those things together under our own proprietary code, uh, started from the ground up, and we now own and run all of that code uh, as as one one system. The uh, you know, I grew up in a little place in New Zealand called Queenstown, up in the mountains, lovely spot, and uh, famous to the Lord of the Rings. Uh, there was one ring to rule them all. Um, you know, I really wanted to think about what one system to rule them all might look like. Uh, so, so where we got to. We have written over 1.5 million lines of code. Uh, to put that into perspective, 
that's about the same amount of code as it takes to fly a F-22 Raptor fighter jet. And it's about a quarter of the amount of code that uh, runs Google Chrome. So uh, it's, it's, it's a really uh, sophisticated space that we all operating in. Uh, financial planning is um, not about just selling products. It's about uh, dealing with hopes and fears and hopes and fears drive strategy, hopes being children's education, planning for the future, retirement, yada, 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 fears being protecting on downside insurance, wills, et cetera. And when you really think about the complexity of what makes us human beings, it comes back to those two things. And I believe those two things are really what we're solving for in being financial planners. Uh, so the code base to address that, you know, uniformly on the front end of the system, which is is what uh, people would see when they log into to Picture Wealth, uh, is a, a fraction of the code base that we're running on the back end of the system, uh, which really brings all of those uh, disparate systems, the stack, as you've called them, uh, together onto our code. Um, and that journey, you know, uh, it started as a PowerPoint presentation, and I met with someone and uh, presented that PowerPoint presentation and um, didn't go according to plan. So I called up my brother and I said, you know, didn't go according to plan. And he said, did you include animation in your PowerPoint? And I was like, animation, what's that? And then kind of, you know, let's get some stuff flying in from the side. Uh, yeah, we did that. And funnily enough, it worked. True story. Uh, and we raised some money and off a, an, a vision and an intent and, uh, the, the strong footing of that research that I spoke about earlier, uh, we had a MVP that we knew we wanted to bring to market, uh, and we did. Uh, so that was really a you know a founders round and friends and family. Uh, we then went through a seed round and then a late seed round last year, uh, where we raised about twelve million. And there's a fair bit in the media about that. Google Picture Wealth, have a look. Um, but that points us now to be, you know, pretty well positioned to uh, to be considering a Series A cap, Series A capital raise uh, that we're on at the moment. Uh, and our fundamental objective there is is to to come east. Um, I love the the quote uh, out of the Art of War by Sun Tzu. Uh, he says, "Let your plans be as dark as night." And then strike like a lightning bolt. So uh, we're a little little WA business. Uh, Perth's a long way from the rest of Australia. Canva came from here. They did all right. Uh, we share our time zone with 60% of the world's population. Um, but we're now ready to strike like a lightning bolt and coming east uh, and bringing people you know, in, into our fold and, and really thinking about what the future of advice might look like together. And we've got a number of, number of models that that um, represents. I, I ponder our future. I uh, have a feeling that we may actually re regress uh, and that, you know, could potentially be going back to the agency model. Uh, for those who are new in the industry, our sector came from uh, life insurance brokers who had a story to tell and a, and a policy to sell. They were a representative of a product. Uh, and then we went through a whole heap of reforms where they had to walk differently, talk differently, probably start wearing ties and then start delivering statements of advice. Yep. Uh, and then, you know, FSR, FOFA, GFC, and, and ultimately FASIA was, was the straw that broke the camel's back. Uh, and now the regulatory or legislative burden that resides inside our businesses to, to run profitably uh, is enormous. Uh, so I think what's just around the corner is potentially an agency model. Uh, but instead of being an agent of a product, uh, you're an agent of a service. Uh, and if that service is technology, uh, then all you have to do as an advisor is, is feed the machine uh, and know that the whole back office uh, support, power planning, advice production, um, you know, data analytics, advice opportunity, um, identification, et cetera, is looked after for you. Uh, and you know, bring us back to what advisors are, are best suited to do, and, and that's sit in front of clients and and help them with their hopes and their fears. So here we come. We're in, in the market now. We we had a, a big sprint through 2020 to to get some scale, uh, just like our friends at the fishing company. Um, and uh, now we want to we want to go north up into Asia, where we we already reached out to, and then come east as we expand our net, network across the eastern seaboard, seaboard of Australia. Well, wow, amazing. Uh, yeah, so definitely on the technology side, it does it does take a large bucket of money. Um, 
and you know a lot of a lot of you know 1.5 million lines of code um, takes time as well, time and money and 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 passion. I'm I'm sure that journey is not a, an easy one, and there would have been many of uh, ups and downs along the way. Yeah, plenty of funny stories, heartbreaking stories, joy, joy, hope, fears, frustration. All of it comes with it as a startup founder. Um, but you know, I just so strongly believe that the best time uh, for innovation is when uncertainty is at the highest yeah. and you know we we can't when i haven't seen our sector go through a, a greater period of uncertainty um and, and you know the older generation who are uh, unfortunately you know at their their wits end you know we i don't want to just help the end consumers that we're built to help i want to help our sector i want to take financial planning forward and that's you know really what we've uh, focused on and you know how can we progress financial planning financial education financial literacy to become an everyday topic in, in all of everyone's lives and uh, the only way in, in our humble opinion is with technology uh, that you know doesn't sit behind multiple multiple thousands of dollars worth of fees which you know limit access to that to only only the select few yep yep which the clients have to pay for now let's just thank thank heavens for our animations on micro on powerpoint because uh, otherwise this may not have ever happened but i wanted to just you can actually put video in powerpoint <laughs> i think you can now, now. wow um now right, I've, I've only just worked to, I've to, only just worked out the microwave. <laughs> I wanted to go into this idea that you mentioned around what the the future of the financial advisor could look like, because obviously um, a, a big part of what um, advisors do, you know, they help clients with decisions and decisions, as you mentioned before, could be emotional decisions or logical decisions. And the, and the software, uh, the technology is taking um, a lot of the, the heavy lifting with the logical decisions. Um, and then the advisor's, their communication with the clients around the emotion of those decisions is, is happening. Is this, does that mean for um, advisors, there is an opportunity that you mentioned before that aren't going to be making doing the financial advice piece to be, to do that coaching piece? Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a spectrum. Think, think of it as a, a slider on one, one end of the slider. You've got uh, an advisor who, who's keen to get out, uh, but they still want to share their knowledge, wisdom and information either with, uh, well, uh, primarily across across the industry. Uh, so if they're out, they don't necessarily need to be coaching the end client uh, because at the other end of that slider is someone who's just starting their career. And so if you've got an advisor who's exiting and handing over the servicing of their clients, however that may be, uh, and then a new advisor that you're bringing in to, to look after those clients, uh, the coaching can actually happen behind the scenes. So ex-advisor to new advisor, here's the client case, here's the relationship that I've had for a long time, and here's the reasons why I've got three super balances running for them because they're each individually taxed parcels and there's you know information that would completely uh, exit the industry if you don't create a space for those who, who are you know, the, the pioneers of financial planning across Australia. Um, and in terms of how the, what the slider looks like for the people that could in, interact with us, it's a different one. You've got completely independent on the, the left-hand side, although you're working with our licensing, you run your business, you run your brand, but you get access to our technology to optimise and, and drive profits in your, in your company. Uh, and then we move it a bit further along, and that's the partnered model where we put in place all of the back office infrastructure. Um, people support power planning like I spoke about before. Uh, but we're also acquisitional. So uh, so you've got independent to partnered to transitioned, meaning that we've done some kind of transaction with them. And at that point, they're either going to exit or become an employee of ours to continue servicing clients or can you know sit internally in the business to help our, our coach and guide our advisors. Well, so you've got a lot of different models. Obviously, you probably need that with 15 different acquisitions in the last 12 months and um, and all of those financial advisors staying on in some formal capacity. Yeah, well, I think that, you know, it all comes back to the client. You and I have spoken before about goals, and let's talk talk about it now before I steal your thunder and claim your term, but, but <laughs> right, you refer to it as goals under management. Yeah, we track funds under management as a sector, fun, but you, you track gum. Can you tell me a bit about that? And then, you know, that's fundamental to what we do, but I just love hearing it from you. Yeah, so uh, so that's exactly right. So the idea that um, you can you can walk into any particular place or talk to a client or in the media and you can say, 
Uh, these are this is the exact amount of goals that we have as a practice under management. You know, we we look after this many clients, we look after this many goals, and this is our goals under management, our measure of success. And if you like, you could really just say, look, we're trying to get that down to zero. That'd be the ultimate, right? Everybody achieving their goals. That's never going to happen because there are always going to be more goals to come into place. But um, that and the their concept of you know how many goals in the last twelve months did you help your clients achieve? You know, that's the other thing. You know, how can you just say what we've achieved in the past um, as a business, um, as a licensee, um, as an industry, um, to be able to start talking about the fact that we're looking after human emotions, human goals as an as a profession, not we're just looking after the the unemotional part or the money part of it. Absolutely, and and gum makes clients more. Come on, is your joke <laughs> sticky? That's right. That's right. I'd forgotten the answer to that one. But yes. That was one we prepared earlier. Didn't that was one I spoke to you earlier about. Gum makes clients sticky. Correct. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's uh, an awesome way to think about it because, you know, coming back to the comment of hopes and fears, it's all about goals. Uh, advice is about strategy and, you know, way down at the bottom of that is, is product. Our sector needs to move really, really quickly away from product being the thing. Uh, to having the consumer or the client being the thing and then reaching back across across sector, across industry uh, to see which products can help help those goals come to life. Yep. yep. I think it helps with everything too, with, you know, FDS, with opt-in, with, you know, what, what service you're providing for the fees you're charging. There's just, you know, so moving somebody towards their goal is part of the service you're offering, um, not yeah. just uh, a review of their super fund. Well, and, and beyond that, a fact find is not actually a thing. I reckon somewhere in Australia there was a conference and someone stood up and held a data collection document at the front of the room and waved it at everyone and then it got adopted and then got called a fact finder and then we as financial planners spent a couple of decades sitting in front of people for an hour and a half asking them to to spell their middle name and, you know, boring blunt data that can be uh, collected almost at the blink of an eye digitally now and, you know, that that process needs to change. So uh, the, the, the reference to fact finder does not reside in the legislation anywhere. Yeah, we've got Craig who's working with us who, who spent 14 and a half years with ASIC. He's joined as our chief compliance officer and you know, it's fascinating uh, when you really, really uh, dive into what the regulation is trying to help us do and, and ultimately it's just saying, you know, know your client. Yeah. Um, whilst we, we know that's in our business and it's a checklist that we, we must adopt, how about you get to know the data at, at arm's length uh, and, and it, at least in a trusted way, um, but get to know your client at a, at a human level and, and dive into their goals and objectives and their, you know, what's scoped in, what's scoped out, and do we have consent to provide you across the areas that we think should be scoped in that you potentially don't yeah. uh, think you need advice on, and you know that's that's the future of our sector. Yeah. I think fact find actually was around before um, financial services reform. Um, kicked in in 2001, 2002, um, because it used to be the information that you would put in the old customer advice record before uh, we had SOAs. Yeah. You know, it's a sort of a hangover from a previous regime, if you like. Yeah. So, you know, what, what do you what do you care about? What does success look like? Yep. Who's, who's important to you? Yep, exactly. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Now, I want to talk yeah. about... I want to talk about the concept that um, during your acquisitions and process uh, in the last couple of years, you ended up with acquiring a licensee. We did. Um, I want to talk about how, how that happened and also um, what you've turned that into. Sure. Um, so we, we were looking at it. Yeah, it's a bit like a bit like bacon and eggs, really. Uh, the, the chicken was involved, but the pig was fully committed. Yeah. So we built the tech. We got the financial planning arm of the business going, uh, but then we really wanted to commit and uh, take over a, uh, a licensing offer uh, so that we could make the most technologically advanced uh, licensing offer available a- across Australia. So uh, that was a, a transaction which occurred uh, front end of last year. Uh, the transaction settled on the 27th of March, which was four days out of the bottom market bottom of the market, mid-lockdown, COVID at its peak, and none of the uh, shareholders on either side, the financiers, the lawyers, the bankers, or you know, key directors across either business could be in the same room. 
Uh, so a fun and educational process there. But you know, like like our industry, where where COVID taught uh, everyone to to bring forward about three or four years worth of digitization into a two month period, uh, we got it done. Uh, and you know, the the premise behind that transaction is is that leadership uh, team. Uh, particularly Mark, who who ran that licensee and now joins us as our chief operating officer, you know, has a very very aligned belief in what we think the future of advice is, and uh, he he was completely there with the vision. He was missing the technology piece. Uh, so, in completion of that acquisition, uh, he's become a meaningful uh, part of our our org chart and our company as a whole. Uh, and that is to do what I've just said, and that's bring the most technologically advanced uh, licensee out to the country. What does that actually mean? Um, go back to my comments before. The wealthy lets mum and dad Australia see their wealth. Uh, the super wealthy lets uh, financial planners who are working with us uh, see the wealth of all of their their wealthies. <laughs> here, here goes my lisp again. Uh, and you know, the, the super wealthy is us at the licensee level you know, what can we um, help you with in terms of getting data and information together that's otherwise been uh, through a third-party provider and, you know, you, you didn't have that direct access or control to the ownership or, or use of that data and information uh, and bring that together and then, you know, come to your business and say, you know, here's some other stuff that you could you could improve on. Yeah, I was going to ask you about this exact point because, I mean, the data has often flowed through two or three different stepping stones before it gets to the financial advisor. That's sort of the premise of why it's always been untrusted or late or we're not sure about. And and You can't trust it. It's inaccurate and you can't have it feed straight on to advice documents to know hand on heart that you're dealing with real source information. Uh, So the lesson for us is when we we allowed clients on our platform who could connect to up to 22,000 financial institutions across the world to, you know, bring in historical spendings or super fund balances or share portfolios or everything, um, you know, really at the consumer side, uh, we wanted to go uh, to the other side and that's to connect straight into the institutions across uh, all of the clients that we're ultimately the servicing advisor for uh, and, and, connect directly into those institutions uh, live information so that we can hand on heart have have integrity of data and information that can drop straight onto uh, advice documents and we can know it and trust it and uh, you know run analytics across it to determine if they're in the right thing or not so you're saying you've solved that yeah that's massive it's massive. Uh, we are not at the end of the list by any means and in, in connecting to 100 percent of the institutions um, there we uh, yeah, just just think the old Pareto principle, 80-20. 80% of your clients are going to be sitting with 20% of the providers. So we're in that 20% of providers at the moment, but we're starting to see, you know, closer to 80% of the data. Um, so ultimately then, as the most technologically advanced licensee, we want to work with advisors on that continuum, either in an independent model, a partner model, a transition model, or an employed model uh, to work with us. In, in leveraging data and information to provide better advice uh, and all the while uh, the business is, is pursuing what we started, you know, a number of years ago now, which is the employee financial wellness, um, you know, where we're picking up thousands or, or tens of thousands of clients through our employee, employee financial wellness program uh, that people coming under the license not only to get to use the tech, but we want them, you know, if they're, if they're following the, uh, the methodology and how we provide advice, uh, we want them to help us service clients that's uh, a, a list now of our employee financial wellness program, which is uh, larger than we have resources to get to. So that that's kind of where we sit, mate. The, uh, the lightning bolts hit. We, we're in market. We, we spent the time and energy, um, you know, quietly confident that we, we have a solution for the future. Uh, we're here now with that solution and, you know, we We'll uh, bring some marketing and and uh, presence across east. Uh, we do have an office in Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, as it stands, with people on the ground there. But we really want to uh, scale up uh, for the purpose of of getting to you know the ninety four percent of uh, Australia that uh, it, it remains unadvised. I made that statistic up, by the way. Uh, I reckon that might be about right. Eighty twenty, and then eighty twenty of the ones that are advised because a good chunk of them aren't. 
Yeah, it's an, it's, an, it's an interesting one that um, well, is it an ongoing fee relationship? Is it a you know is it a, one piece of advice, one off, one time? It, you know, it's very difficult to sort of say. But I think um, I've got a bit of a saying that ten percent of any market will pay ten times the price because it's, it's prestige. And often the financial advice, the way it's, it is at the moment, is that prestige end of the market. It's the it's the first class airlines and Parada handbags of of the industry. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and with with Craig's depths of knowledge from the regulator. You know, we uh, bring that into the tech. Think karaoke, follow the bouncing ball as you sing along. Uh, the, the technology wants to guide you and your client through a, a systemized, uh, think of a process production line or, or a, you know assembly line almost where you know what you need to do next so that you're compliant, you're meeting the regulatory requirements, but ultimately your client is getting frequent touch points along that uh, production line uh, to get to be in an ongoing serviced relationship, probably annually renewable uh, because we know that's just around the corner. And, um, yeah. No, well, all of these little stepping stones, the bouncing ball, I can just visualise at the end of the song, there's the financial advisor standing there going, well, what can we do next? Yeah, jazz hands. What's the <laughs> jazz hands? <laughs> Sure, that's exactly the visual I'm getting. Um, so tell us about uh, um, you know two you know two and a bit years now in as you as you're going. How how, how many clients have you got, or how many you know clients you're looking after with that the, the picture wealth with the wealth wealthy uh, and uh, and advised clients? Yeah, there's forty thousand clients across the business now, um, which is which is pretty quick growth. You know, we're now at the well. I, I, we're at the point where we're aiming to get the technology into 100% of their hands. Uh, we're not there yet. Um, and, you know, we are talking to prospective investors in the company at the moment. And, a- again, there's there's a, a deep topic here which we could go all the way into. But, you know, we could have gone deep tech and building some AI widget toy thing which people would have plowed money into, which it ultimately wouldn't have made money, but it would have solved a problem. But we went at it from the other end, and that's get to scale first. Uh, so we've got a, a pipeline ahead of us, which will take us out to about 150% of the, the clients that we have at the moment, around about 100,000 clients uh, across the business, uh, and where we deploy the technology across those, and then we go deep. You know, once the data and information's there, then you've got the balance sheet and the P&L to go deeper on the tech and bring the AIs and the robots uh, and the machine learning uh, to, the, to the next level from what we've done already. Yeah, you also start to see a different shape of your your P&L. Uh, see so profit and loss statement, you uh, see new income lines coming in uh, where those income lines are related to software as a service uh, as opposed to um, financial planning advisory services, which also equal FDS and opt-in. Uh, it gives you the ability to introduce new income lines into to your business. Um, and you know, it's us now to roll out the tech end and those software as a service agreements across our existing client base and the, and the, the work in progress of the pipeline that's just ahead of us um, with some pretty big ambitions ahead. Um, but yeah, I like, I like the fact that we're here in Australia. It's the most heavily regulated environment in the world, which also means it's, it's hard, but if you can solve it, then as you globalize, it's really just about dec- decreasing complexity uh, and knowing at the core of the business, you're still dealing with the, the same fundamental uh, problem or opportunity, and that's just uh, helping people. I'm not sure if that answers your question. That pretty me. much does. I'm 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 blown away, and I and you know you know heading towards a hundred thousand clients in only you know a few short years is is pretty incredible, and certainly goes to show what is possible. And uh, smashing a few glass ceilings on the way through. Congratulations! Now, if somebody wants to continue the conversation, what's the best way they can, you know, get hold of you and you know talk about licensing or or anything today? Yeah, about? I mean, you you'll find me on LinkedIn. I love uh, to communicate. We're we're here to help. If you're in the industry and you want to stick around, we're here to help. If you want to get out, we're here to help. Uh, and or you can just ping us through our website or uh, on on email, which is info at picturewealth dot com. Info at picturewealth dot com and reach out. I'm, I'm, yeah, a phone call away. I want to talk to people. I want uh, some momentum. I want to, you know, fundamentally help the advice community to do what we're all setting out to do uh, somewhat in a a disjointed manner uh, historically and and, in a more cohesive manner as we go forward and and really lean into the fundamentals of probably everyone who's listening to this podcast. And that is how can we all learn from each other and uh, create better outcomes for consumers. So uh, I absolutely invite people to reach out, whatever the, the topic may be. 
Wonderful. Thank you, David Pettit. Really appreciate uh, sharing your story with us, and I really look forward to seeing how this uh, pans out over the next couple of years. I'm, I'm excited for you. Thanks, Razor. I greatly appreciate it. Well, there you have it, another episode of the XY Advisor podcast. Uh, Fraser Jack here, joined with me, Emily Blanche. Hey, Fraser, how are you? I'm fantastic, and a fantastic moment where we get to do some shout-outs. Like I say, my favourite time of the week. All right, so today I want to give a massive shout-out to XY Advisor Thomas Lyon. He uh, reached out to XY, in particular through XY Plus, when he was looking to join a new uh, practice when he moved interstate from Brisbane to Sydney. And the reason I want to give him a shout out is because he sent the most amazing message through earlier this week, and I want to quickly read it out. It's He said, super grateful that I found XY. I first joined and was using it, or sorry, I first joined when I started out as an undergraduate in financial planning, and it gave me my first insights into the type of people that financial advisors are and what day-to-day looks like as a career. Recently, I reached out to the guys at XY during my move into state, and Emily put me in contact with the person who is now my new employer. Super cool that we've got this group for financial advisors amazing stuff. Um, Great to be able to make those connections. And I know Thomas was looking to join a forward thinking practice where he could become a real asset, you know, add to the company and deliver great value to clients. And to be able to see that come about is amazing. Such a feel good moment, you know, such a feel good moment for uh, for Thomas, but also for you and to be able to connect that and, um, you know, and help Thomas's career along. I remember having a beer, I remember having a beer with you, Thomas, at uh, at the XY Christmas party on the Gold Coast uh, at the end of last year. So it's really good to see that you've uh, found your feet Uh, and congratulations. 